so I think we have um, enough on so that we can go ahead and get started. So first, uh, welcome everyone to the um, Network Service Mesh meeting. Uh, it's been a while since um, uh, all of us have been able to hop on since we've had uh, ONS going on. So uh, before we get started, uh, let's do some agenda bashing. So if there's anything that you would like added to the agenda, uh, please go ahead and uh, speak up now. Uh, Michael and I would like to make a, a standing item uh, for uh, the uh, the performance testing part. Uh, I don't know whether we, it was there last week. It is not currently. So can we add that to the standing point for every week, please? Sure. It's a VNF CNF. Actually, let me type it. It's a VNF CNF testing and benchmarking Michael Machik. Mikhail Machik. So I don't know where you want me to put it in. Um, yeah. I'm um, how much time do you uh, do you need? Because if... uh, this is going to be just a readout, no arguments, because Mikkel and me are now working on it. So it's going to be readout. Five minutes is fine. Cool. Well, let's put it first, and then we'll continue on from there. Okay. Uh, so before events or after events? Uh, after events. Okay. Oh, hold on. Uh, screwed up. No, thank you. Cool. Anyone else who wants anything added to the agenda? Uh, oh, and Mikael is actually on holiday today, so it will be me only. Cool. But I'll, I'll provide the readout where we are. Thank you. Okay, and in, uh, in that scenario, so let's get started with the event. So our next big event is KubeCon Seattle. We have uh, two talks in KubeCon. Um, something I've mentioned on the events as well is we also have the FIDO Mini Summit, which is part of the uh, just. Uh, a co-hosted with uh, KubeCon, and uh, so we we expect to see some network service mesh at the FIDO conferences, uh, our mini summit as well. Um, the the main item that we need to take care of there is going to be a network service mesh demo, and that's going to that's on the agenda already. Uh, so someone also added a podcast and a blog. So. Uh, Anyone who is willing to step up to to help up with those would be would be fantastic. Um, and are there any other events anyone's aware of that we should add to the uh, uh, that we should add in? Not at this time. Cool. Also, if someone could share the screen, that'd be uh, that'd be most helpful. Um, Okay, the DNF CNF testing and benchmarking. Um, I'll let you go ahead and uh, take it from here. Magic, you're you and Mikhail are up. Uh, actually, apologies. Can we move my point a bit later? I have a parallel call. I need to pay the bill um, that I can't move. So, can we move my point to later in the agenda, please? Sure, we'll we'll move it down. Um, Thank you. Okay, KubeCon, uh, let's go straight into the KubeCon demo then. So our goals is, our, our first goal is we have want to have a basic local and remote cross-connect by November 7th, which lines up with the VNF CNF comparison needs and a hardware cross-connect by December 7th. Um, nice to have included streaming topology and visualizations, auto healing, and a point to click run the demo yourself, which um, conveniently, uh, will be a static website over, uh, preferably over Hugo. It didn't have to be Hugo, but that would be that would be most helpful. Um, and so, uh, Ed, do you want to do you want to talk about your uh, your ideas on the uh, KubeCon demo? I believe you have more context on yeah, this. Yeah. So, so first of all, <clears throat> I just want to make sure for the basic remote local remote cross connect stuff that would include local MIF, MIF cross connects and sort of remote cross connects over VXLAN minimally. Um, and I want to make sure that's actually sounds like it's lining up with what you guys need for the VNF CNF comparison stuff. Because I think we, we very much like to make sure that it lands in your hands in a timely manner. Sorry guys, I'm back. So do we have the VNF CNF folks here? I think we do. 
Hi, Ed. Yes, I don't believe Taylor's on the call. We have Watson on the call as well. And I think that that does line up the remote cross connect is something that we were we were looking at. Um, okay. Our I think our deadline for the initial benchmarking was going to be November 5th. So it might be uh, overlapping timelines there. Okay. So probably worth noting. Um, do you mind just noting the, the, the timeline there for what, you, uh, what you're what you expecting so we can sort of try and steer those two together as much as possible? Cool. So, sorry, this is about the, the KubeCon demo or uh, that uh, uh, I started to assist with the team with Mikael or is it something else? Ah, so there are two sets of things going on here. One is the VNF CNF demo work, which um, you're assisting with, which is awesome. And then okay. there is trying to build a demo for network service mesh for KubeCon. There's a strong ambition to bring those two together so the VNF CNF demo can run on network service mesh. And <clears throat> so, in order to try and put some structure around that, we're trying to figure out what would have to be delivered by when in order to make that work out. So, what so we have- we can, so, Sorry, Ed, so we have demo one and demo two, yes? Right, right, and we're trying to get those to come together. So can we, can we call it like that so that we avoid confusion? Because right now, it doesn't look like we have a different ones. So can we have a demo one, demo two, both titled and then and then deliverables for them and then you say that ideally if they merge that's great so that we have a demo one plus demo two so <clears throat> i'm fine with that i would suggest we call them the vnf cnf comparison demo and the network service mesh demo so there's no confusion. okay fine so let's let's do that because that's not how they called right now the one thing i do want to be very respectful of is um you know the vnf cnf comparison folks while they're certainly um you know very valued members of the network service mesh community as well. Um, we don't steer what they're doing out of this meeting, right? Um, and so it's it's less of a um, us managing the unified schedule and more of a communicating between communities to try and get schedules that mesh. Does that roughly match your understanding of things, Watson, Lucina, etc.? That seems yes. about right. So okay. we have a KubeCon demo for network service mesh, and we have a KubeCon demo for VNF and CNF comparison. So these are two demos. Can we, can we call them exactly like that? Because current text is confusing. Right, so I think this is being called as the, the QCon demo for network service mesh. Um, and- Okay, all right. I, I'm gonna type, to type the part that I am playing in. So KubeCon demo yep. for uh, VNF, CNF comparison. So that so, the semantics are the same. Sorry, Lucina, I so went ahead. Part okay. of reason, Sounds good. Part of the reason I wanted to talk here about goals and dates is, is twofold. One is I want to make sure that we, we have mutual understanding in the hopes that these two demos can come together. The other one is obviously this is a community. This is something we figure out as a group in terms of you know, who's willing to work on what, what people find interesting and, and so forth. So I, I took a swag here for the things that were interesting to me and the timelines that would be interesting to me. Um, I want to make sure we get input from other folks on the call about what they think is important and what timelines are important to them. Understood. So I know we've got a bunch of folks who recently popped up from um, you know, in the community. Other people who are looking for things that they would want to be able to share by, show by KubeCon and other contexts. Um, or, you know, who are looking for things to work on, who are sort of curious about some of these things. I think that is, is useful. Tom. Murkowski votes no on procedural vote for Kavanaugh. Uh, I think we've got somebody who should probably mute themselves who's on a procedural vote. But I don't know who yet. Okay. Cool. Um, so anyway, feel free to speak up. You know, if you want to reach out offline, if you want to think about it and, and add something to the agenda for this next week, that's all good too. Um, and then there were a couple things I'd sort of marked as nice to haves. Um, and the reason I sort of wanted a list of those is there are certain things that we could do that would be awesome, but that are kind of orthogonal. Um, you know, in that they can be worked on sort of, of while other things are going on without disturbing them. And some of those are things like 
um, streaming topology and visualization, which would be kind of a cool thing to be able to show as part of a demo. So you can see the links uh, arise and pass away. Um, there have been a lot of conversations people have had around auto healing, which can probably be best summarized as, what do you do as a network service mesh when one end of a connection goes, when you know, the one the network service endpoint goes away to restore service for the thing consuming that network service endpoint? Um, and there's a lot of interesting thoughts around there. And then the point and click run the demo yourself was sort of the realization that, well, if you look at the pieces we have here, we've got the cross cloud CI stuff that can basically go and start the demo up for you. We've got Packet, which has APIs that are running, um, APIs that are accessible as REST APIs. You can poke those things with JavaScript. So in, in principle, you could probably put together a static website page with some JavaScript with a big button on it that basically kicks off the demo and shows you something pretty as the demo runs on Packet. Um, this is obviously a stretch goal. Um, but it's the sort of thing that people could work on if they were interested in it in parallel without in any way, shape, or form impacting some of the other things that we're, we're trying to get done. So a lot of the nice to have are sort of things shopping for folks interested in getting their hands dirty. Um, Ed, uh, this is Ram. I'm sorry, I, I was, um, the agenda, I just I remembered uh, there was one item before we were thinking of talking about in depth, sort of the policy, Kubernetes policy interface and how network service mesh interacts with it. Um, so maybe if you have time, we can discuss yep. today or the well, upcoming. That's, um, that's, that's or, awesome. If we, could, if we could add that to the, the agenda, that's awesome. Um, it may be a little bit of a longer conversation, so we may want to put it a little further down so we, we, you know, we don't crowd out other items. Um, but I, I definitely, I know you brought that up last time. Thank you for raising it again. It's a totally worthwhile conversation to have. Thanks. Cool. All right. So um, anyway, so I think I've sort of beat that drum enough. Um, so Frederick, take it, take us on to the next item. Sure. So uh, we now have uh, data plane API work that is uh, that is currently being done. So. There is work being done, I believe, by both Ed and Sergey. So um, you both have been working closely with each other to help produce a data plane API. So um, I'll let you both uh, continue on with that. You want to go first, Sergey? Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, I could briefly talk about my part. So basically, um, if you remember, we had an um, uh, action item of refactoring uh, API. And at that time, it uh, seemed to be a good point uh, to uh, to look at the data plane API as well, because, I mean, they're kind of related. And <clears throat> so Ed and I, we started talking. And um, um, basically, to be able to complete the re API refactoring, I suggested a couple of points which could be, uh, which I think Ed picked up and uh, built upon that more, more complex uh, structure. So right now, um, <clears throat> basically, uh, the data API, uh, let's say the, the simple data API, data plane uh, controller, which is cu currently merged in the uh, NetMesh, it can be used as a reference model it pretty much does everything as it's any data plane controller would need to be do from the, uh, the from the control plane perspective uh, i mean exchanging the liveness messages with nsm and all the all the nice things so the only thing is missing is the final piece which uh, at uh, hopefully at soon <clears throat> and then we will be able to complete the, the data plane I, I've, I've got one patch that's in progress that I'm expecting to land this weekend um, that, that sort of finishes the um, sort of, I think, the, the, the immediate set of refactoring stuff for the API, uh, the data plane API. And then um, I think at that point it will be in, in good shape. Obviously, you know, people will continue to discover things that can be enhanced about it. But I, I think that the basic structure will be quite reasonable. Um, I, I've got a question. Do, do folks have an interest in maybe doing a review of that API here next week? 
uh, so we can sort of talk through it structurally and get community input. What, what is the exact uh, uh, scope for this uh, API? Sorry, I haven't been paying attention to the data plane API. Yeah, so this is simply the API that the network service manager uses to talk to whatever data plane is handling the cross connects. Um, so, so this is this is basically programming the uh, the data plane functionality. Exactly. So if I okay. if I am a network service manager running on a node, and I need a cross connect between some pod that wants a kernel interface or a MIF, and some negotiated tunnel that I've negotiated with a network service manager on another node, I need a cross connect that is, you know, composed of no IF to VXLAN uh, and obviously bidirectional. And so I need a way to communicate that to the data plane. And of course you get other niceties like what exactly, what mechanisms can the data plane support itself? Those kinds of things. So there, there's some details in there, but the basic idea is how does the network service manager ask the data plane to create cross connects? Okay, and is it following some, some data model, if I can ask? Yeah, no, absolutely. And that, that's what's actually been landing in the patches that have been going into, um, that, that, that Sergey and I have been working on that have been landing the last week or two um, up in the repo. Um, and then there's a sort of a document that got a little bit started and will probably get you know, cleaned up to match what's in the code here, uh, talking about the data plane API in the context of the other APIs. Okay, I've got uh, two more questions. So are you, are you actually um, uh, using the data models that have been defined for this functionality elsewhere? Uh, specifically, I know about two sources. One is IETF uh, NetMod Working Group, which is doing Hyang, but it can be translated to JSON, Protobuf, you name it, because the, it, the, the Yang is the strictest and the other guys are less strict, but it would be nice if, um, if they follow so that, um, so that it's easier to do machine-based translators uh, in the future and, so, and also leverage, make sure we don't miss any functionality. And then there is, and there's a number of um, young models defined in ITF, but then there is also another thing called open conf or open net conf or some open young thing, which is also, um, I think it's an open source uh, community-based effort to define network centric data models. And I'm sure L2 cross connect is there. So is L2 bridge. IP4 and so, IP6. We actually aren't, but there's a, there's a fairly good reason. And so here's the thing. Um, what you said, it makes a ton of sense if I'm talking to physical devices that do net comp gang things. Right? Yes. It makes tons yes. of sense. Yes. So this is part of the reason why in the API document, one of the things that we talk about is the distinction between network service mesh in the abstract and network service mesh in the particular as it, it involves Kubernetes. Um, and one of the reasons that we make that distinction is because in the abstract, network service mesh has the network service manager to network service manager API, and it has the need for a, service reg a network service registry. That's it. How a network service manager manages whatever thing it needs to manage is not mm -hmm. business in the abstract. So the data plane API that we're talking about here is very specific to how the network service manager on a node talks to the vSwitch on a node. And in that context, um, we aren't actually in any way, shape, or form particularly assisted by those. Um, okay, sort of I, I, I understood. So you're doing a top-down approach. I'm talking bottom-up. Do they two, do, do the two meet? Yes, they do. Uh, essentially, oh. the, the, the network service manager has a set of responsibilities in the abstract, uh, which can be met in any manner that makes sense for the network service manager. Um, in the Kubernetes case, which is what we're focusing on, we have sort of fleshed out what happens to to the network service manager in Kubernetes. If I had a network service manager that was managing physical network boxes, then that can be flushed out in whatever way makes sense for the person writing that network service manager. Okay, so can I see the top down and bottom up flow in the repo? Uh, could you give me a pointer? Yeah, you can, I'll point you to the start of it, but please note the document is not quite complete yet. So there is a point where it's- No, 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 code, 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 no document, code. Yeah, so I can point you to various places in the repo, but you will find, for example, API definitions, then you will find controllers that do things, et cetera. Um, so it is not going to be presented in, in a way that is going to be terribly um, comprehensive. No, it's, 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 it's okay, it's okay, it's okay. What, whatever you can, you can give me, I'm just now interested. Because yeah, no, I've, done, I've done bottom up, and bottom up, up to abstraction uh, through levels of uh, Young and JSON focused system. 
Yep. You, you're going you're going top down i just wanted to see how that's uh, how that you guys are going top down i'm just interested yep. And, yep. Um, and is it is it in plugins or or i'm looking at the repo is it an api repo somewhere no no it's the network service mesh repo the legato i am like, i am there i'm there i'm in the network service mesh repo github yep yep so i'll, I'll get you links for that and try and give you point, good pointers to jumping off points in that in the code okay uh, cool. so a document cool. that actually makes a reasonable attempt at trying to explain it from the top down so okay. it may be much more comprehensible. Thank you. So I, I, did anyone have an opinion as to whether you want to review the API here next week or whether that would just be a waste of the, the time on the call and you'd rather just have a document you can go read offline? Per personally, uh, I find um, it very useful. And it would be a good idea to review it. I would like to you know, review the document first. Um, are you talking about a review during next week's meeting or are you talking about a separate event? I was talking about a review during that next week's meeting. Trying to oh, schedule I, other meetings is very complicated for folks. I, yes, I'm plus one on that. Yeah, plus one here too. Yeah, the Aurora guy is uh, plus one too. Me as well. <laughs> I, I and, suspect uh, there would be a lot of interest. So, okay, cool. Yeah, so that's definitely added to the uh, to the next week's agenda, and we'll add that as the uh, as the main uh, the main item. Okay. Yeah, it would be great if people could uh, review uh, the document uh, beforehand because, I mean, going through in the details will be very time consuming. Uh, uh, that's, can you point, put a pointer to the document? It's uh, uh, at PR. Yeah, I, we, we, no, no, we, need the, we need the link. We need the link and we go to this Q&A next week. Right, right. But here's the thing I would ask. Um, I'll go ahead and th that document is still in progress. There's a patch dropping this weekend of the document needs to be cleaned up. So I will drop out a note to the mailing list when that document is in reasonable shape, pointing people towards it so that they can productively review it. I wouldn't want folks to go. I mean, that, that's fine. So just let us, let us know, Ed, when it's ready for review and we review before the call. Um, Ed, just a question though. Are you adding, you're adding this stuff to the NSM API document, that's right? The document, that's the document I was intending to, to bring up to snuff, yes. Yeah. So there is at, there is a preliminary version of the NSM API in the repo right now under docs. It's nsmapi.md, and you know you just of course you can browse to it because all the documentation gets rendered. And um, but that is a little bit incomplete. You kind of um, um, but uh, that, I think that's what Ed is is uh, is uh, you know um, kind of like filling in the details. That, that, that's the intention, yeah. And that would probably be what we would use to drive the discussion next week. Um, so, yeah. All right, cool. I'll add that uh, on the link below Ed's comment, if that's okay with everybody. Awesome, please do. Um, we... uh, I, yeah, it, it's actually there is some code there too. So, is this the code that we, we can have a look as part of the documentation review? Yeah, so this is the document that I was intending to review. And um, effectively, it, it's easiest to talk about things in their natural form. And so a lot of those things are in, you know, basically talking through proto files. Um, but as I mentioned before, um, that document at this moment is incomplete. So if you get to a point in it where you're like, where you basically feel like the document is incomplete or has become less coherent, Yes, that's true. We will bring it up to snuff for next week. No, that, that's fine. That's fine. Ed. I mean, this is work in progress. But uh, I, I apologize for bunch, barging in. But actually, it's, I already read it I, or scanned it, fast read it. How, how this card they call it? It looks actually very comprehensive. Thank you. It's getting there. <laughs> it's you are, Yeah, I, I think you are. Um, uh, you are too uh, too shy. I think this is cool. <laughs> If you read it all the way to the bottom, it, you, there are a couple of places where it just doesn't quite fit together. I already did. It's you get good. like two paragraphs, and paragraph one is coherent, and paragraph two is it's coherent. Good. Oh, it's good. Coherent. It's good. It's good. It's good. It's good. I like it. Thank you. Here we go. Cool. So, um, awesome. So, I, I think that's it for the data plane API from my point of view. Um, do you feel like we've talked about everything at this point, Sergey? Uh, yeah, uh, basically, it would be great, uh, you know, if people uh, start to reviewing it more actively and provide the feedback because it's extremely important. I mean, I mean, definitely it can be changed later, but it would be nice to have a 
better start, you know, with the more people chime in with the ideas, suggestions, and all the um, details. Well, which is Sergey's very polite way of saying, um, please, for the love of God, don't make me refactor the API again. Um, so, 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 Sergey and Ed, what is the best way for us to provide comments online? So, um, a very over this weekend, I expect I will be pushing a, a patch to update the API in line. And then either as part of that patch or as a follow on patch to that, I will be pushing updates to bring the document in line with what's actually true in the code. Um, no, 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 but, but, that's, but that's not what I meant. I meant, you know, in Garrett, for example, in FDIO project, when we have patches, we can, oh, we can no, comment, we can in comment GitHub, in. in. You GitHub, can't do it here. In GitHub, a pull request can be commented on. Yeah, you just you just hit the review button and then you can add comments. It's sort of a little bit like Garrett online. Mm, yeah, but it doesn't show code. you. It doesn't present them in the same way, or or am I just uh, not? No, you're you're just having the adaptation to a new tool thing. You can add comments. You can also add comments in line in the code. All right. Um, okay. I'll I'll play with it. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's not exactly like Garrett, but it's it's reasonably close. But it's different enough that it's unfamiliar. So. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Okay. Cool. Awesome. Okay. So uh, don't have too much time. We still have a lot of material to, to cover. So I'm going to jump uh, jump to the next topic. Uh, so architecture ar architecture review, we've already spoken about the data plane API. Is there any other architecture review items that, uh, are, that we're currently looking at that have not been discussed? Um. I, I would, the, the same API document we put it to, the section on talking about abstract components um, for a network service mesh is actually, I think, pretty well, pretty well done from my point of view. Um, so if folks want to comment on that because they think something should be different, um, then that would be a wholly reasonable thing to comment on. It's one of those things that I think it's complete, that means it doesn't necessarily mean it is complete, but it, it does mean that it's certainly something people need to look at. Okay, has this already been pushed to uh, to GitHub for comments, or is it still in the Google Doc? It's actually already part of what's been merged. Um, okay. So let me go ahead and get a link to exactly the section that I mean. Um, okay, so this is stuff that I merged last week then, specifically. Yes, yes. So it's the uh, network service mesh components in the abstract. Um, is one piece of it. Let me go ahead and stick that in the meeting minutes. Yeah, just to just for people to be aware, just because something's merged to the repo, and if it's a document or spec or so on, doesn't mean that that's that's going to be the absolute final version. If you find a hole or a bug or something in there, bring it up. You know, we, we you know we we want to we we want to iterate over this thing over and over again until we until we have something very solid. So yeah, so the the network service mesh in the abstract, and then talk about the. Um, the APIs and the abstract are some of the two things that I think are in reasonable shape. Um, certainly the components of the abstract is, and the APIs and the abstract is sort of getting there. Um, actually, let me retract the API and the abstract. That's going to change a little bit as we fix the data plane stuff. So, and definitely the components of the abstract. Um, and that, that I think will help understand, like, part of the reason I did that was to get a sense of what are the places where it's OK to stick Kubernetes-isms, and what are the places where it's not OK to stick Kubernetes-isms. Um, so, cool. Okay. In, um, in that particular scenario, it looks like the links have been added. Um, moving on to the uh, X Factor CNF. So, I've added a GitHub uh, repo that uh, has some initial documentation that I've written. And what I've done is I've taken the toll factor. <coughs> app uh, methodology website. It's under a open source license. And I forked it, and I've uh, modified an initial version of it. And this is something I just wrote on the, uh, that, I, that I did while I was on the airplane uh, back from, from Amsterdam. And so this is just really rough an initial, initial version. But uh, what I've done is I've created a, uh, some guidance for how people should build uh, CNFs. And so the, the most important parts are uh, I'll, I'll put the uh, the table of contents uh, link in as well. So the most important ones are in the table of 
if you look at the table of contents, there's some additional ones that I added. So they use all of the same ones with the exception of port binding, in, which is number seven. Uh, and I've added in uh, five items. Number one, do not require kernel modification or modules. Number two, explicitly state the payload types that you consume and produce. Number three is listed the, inter the mechanisms, the interface mechanisms that your CNF supports in order of preference. Number four is bind by payload and mechanism. So in other words, don't bind directly to another CNF, bind by the payload and mechanism that you use. And fifth is to treat metrics as, uh, as event streams. So that way that the Kubernetes environment can, uh, can that you set up for, for logging can, can consume and you can make use of things like Prometheus and, and so on. So one thing to note about this is these are not specific to Kubernetes. They're general, how do you build a CNF that can run in anything that is Kubernetes-like? So if someone decides to bring in Mesos or if someone, someone creates a new platform in the future, it should be easy to, to port these CNFs from one system to, to another. And they're also not network service mesh specific either. So they, they, should also, they should also work regardless as to what, what you're using in order to manage your, uh, in, in order to provide that, uh, that control. So uh, if I, for those who are interested in that particular area, uh, there's a couple things that need to be, that I need to do with it. Uh, number one is it's not really easily cons consumable. So I'm, I'm gonna change it. It's using some Ruby based uh, server. I'm gonna get rid of that Ruby based server and migrate it over to Hugo which means that we can then uh, use the same infrastructure we use to build our websites uh, for network service mesh.io and do all reviews and so on. It should be a lot easier to work with. And that'll also fix the, uh, the issues around linking because this thing has a very peculiar way that does links that is not compatible with GitHub. So if you look at the table of contents and try clicking on the links, you'll see that, that it breaks. Uh, although if you go into the actual repo, you'll see each each one listed there. So if anyone wants to provide a, a little bit of help with uh, number one, moving over to, to Hugo or number two, uh, going over the documentation right now, a lot of the ones, especially from one through 12 are still 12 app specific and it would be good to rewrite into some of those sections to be more CNF specific. Uh, and so any, any help I can get with this would be would be fantastic, and of course, any help with the main with the main topic itself. Like there there may be items that I that I left out. Like this is very very rough. So, uh, Frederick, I've got uh, two questions. Sure. Okay, right now you're now up to number seventeen. Yes. That's correct, and so we. Yeah, I'm just looking. I'm just looking at the repo. Last one is metrics, and um, and uh, this uh, may grow depending on the on the merit that we agree within. NSM project, correct? Or wh wh where are those 13 to 17 metrics uh, from? Are they, are, are, is this your own thinking? Is it some, from somewhere? Is it from some other community? Some other, some other what we call in the ITF best current practice? That's, uh, a, that's a great question. So the, the area that, uh, that I've, so right now these primarily came from, uh, from a series of things. Some of it are from my from my experience, I'm working on network service mesh and working within the container space. Some of it are is based upon conversations I've had with uh, with CNCF, like people uh, like uh, 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 like Dan Cohn and Arpit Joshapura, the direction that they want to take CNFs as well. Uh, and some of it have come from internal conversations I've had with uh, within Red Hat. So it's a variety of different places. And so I've been thinking a lot about, you know, what are what are the core like minimum things that you should do in order to help someone who's building a CNF uh, actually build something that will that will be easier to to orchestrate and be able, easier to to consume as an operator and, and manage as an operator. Um, and so I don't talk about it in this particular in this particular document, but I actually have three. Uh, uh, I actually see like three levels of of. Uh, cooperation that uh, that a CNF can have. So one of them is you no longer require any custom kernel modifications or modules. So in other words, you can actually run it in a container. So that's like, I guess you can, you can say like that's a bronze level. Like a silver level would be like your CNF now scales horizontally. And the gold one would be it scales horizontally. And it also can be upgraded and downgraded gracefully without breaking any, any infrastructure. And so, like, so part of the idea is to provide the guidance so that CNF uh, operators can 
or sorry, CNF developers can can build CNFs that will interact better with their environments. Um, and the second one is to also give the operator some level of uh, confidence, where if certain if certain guidelines are met, they know what type of risk they're they're taking on. Like they know, like if if they use like using the bronze, silver, and gold. If you take a bronze one, you know you know what level of risk you're taking versus if you take a gold one. Understood. 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 So uh, here I have a few suggestions, if I can. Sure. Because it looks like you actually spent quite some time to uh, think about it and uh, and also explore both your experience, uh, your colleagues, friends, and also references. What would be really, really, really useful, and I don't know whether other folks um, agree, is to actually back up each of those points, and you already have content there, with informative or, or normative references. So if there is a, this experience comes from somewhere, whether it is a compute world, cloud, VM, networking, old or new, or some uh, operational experience or development experience, it should be called out to motivate, uh, to basically support this item to be a requirement. And 12 factor from what I understand are actually quite strict rules, but some of them are applied to the, to the container apps today in a less strict manner. So I don't know whether we want to express the strictness in a sort of must, should, and, 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 uh, and may, like we do in IETF, but, and by IETF, I mean Internet Engineering Task Force, which is the standard uh, uh, definition organization, SDO, that, is, that has been used to basically build the internet, in case you guys are not familiar with it, um, just, just FYI. Um, uh, but there are some other standard bodies, I understand, like uh, Etsy and others that, that, cannot, that, that do not support you know, some strict requirements like must. But it may be good to have an indication of at least for the factors over 12 from our perspective to express the, you know, the strictness of, of requirements. So that's comment one. Um, and, uh, and comment two is, I would uh, love to work with you to, um, to keep defining those X, X factors. And I really like the name. Thank you. Cool. Yeah. Any, any help I can get from, uh, from anyone. And if you know someone who, uh, who wants to help with this or could be helpful, like definitely, definitely bring them over. So I'm, I'm already shopping this around uh, with a couple other companies. I, I can't give the names out at this particular point yet until I get confirmation that they actually want to participate. Uh, but uh, yeah, I'm, I'm starting to shop this thing, uh, this thing around as well, uh, at least the, the idea of it. And so yeah, I, I want to be able to take this to, to various vendors and, and help give them that guidance. So anyways, I won't take up any more time on this unless someone has a, a an additional comment that they want to to provide and um uh feel free to feel free to ping me as well if uh, if you want to if you want to help thank you Frederick. okay um so so we have the uh, a, a quick toss up in this scenario. I want to make sure that um, that uh, Masiak stuff gets in with the KubeCon demo. Yeah, you had something that you were going to read that was the five minutes, but I also want to make sure that we have enough time for the discussion on Kubernetes policy. Um, and so... I can um, give a very quick a qu a very quick update. It's going to be three minutes. What about that? Cool. Let's uh, let's do that. Thanks. Okay. Okay. So uh, I'm going to be speaking for uh, me and Mikael and partially of Tyler. So specifically focusing on the uh, performance uh, part, VNF versus CNF. So following the discussion last, on the last NSM call, uh, Mikael and me connected twice. And uh, we have actually reviewed in more detail his current results. His current results in the packet.net are somehow off compared to what we are reporting in FDIO SysIt uh, labs that are maintained by Linux Foundation in open source. And uh, we are, um, Mikael is now working on aligning those by reducing the configuration from four cores to one core and making sure that what he's watching in packet.net, what he's seeing in packet.net is aligned with FDIO. The difference between the labs is packet.net is a hosted environment with some switches connecting and things connecting the hosts that, that uh, he's renting. In FDIO, we have a full control of a complete environment, including the wires, and there are no switches. So we consider our environment to be 100% under our control, we see we consider packet.net to be 80% under our control. So that's one. So that's that's one piece. Second piece, uh, we're actually going to be sharing, we're going to give uh, um, Mikael 
another server. He's already using one. Thanks, uh, based on Ed. Uh, thanks, Ed, for uh, organizing the rental. And uh, the server will, should be coming online today. We have some RMA hardware issues, assuming this is the case. As of Monday, the testbed will be allocated to Mikael fully, uh, under 100% under his control, so that he can do his magic. And basically, the idea is to progress on two fronts in parallel, using exactly the same software stack for both data plane and orchestration. And that's the FDIO SysIT two node Skylake based testbed. And I will um, type that in. And, uh, and also the packet.net machine, and I'll type the references in a moment once I, once I stop speaking. Uh, we're going to talk again, I think, on uh, uh, Wednesday next week. And uh, we have a meeting with uh, Taylor and, uh, and the team um, uh, on Tuesday to review the demo scenario and so on. I'll be sharing with the community here on the following call. That's it. Thank you. Unless there are questions. Three minutes. Yeah, that switch thing makes a big difference. So glad you glad you discovered that, Masiak. Well, it's <laughs> uh, you and me are in a very small group that believe that if there is an active device between two two DUTs, uh, they can actually um, uh, uh, they can actually uh, what's the word um, introduce uh, some uh, uh, impairment and um, into or, or distortion into the measurements. And, um, and, and that's what we're exactly gonna capture. However, saying that, packet.net is an amazing platform because it allows people to reproduce it uh, by just booking the thing by a minute or by uh, you know, a, a, a quarter of an hour and, and running the tests. So the idea is to progress on both using FDIO assisted testbed as a reference and try to come as close as possible on the packet.net and explain the, uh, the discrepancies. So that's the goal. And we are quite confident that we'll be able to get there. The challenge we have is, main challenge we have is time because we don't have that much time. So hopefully we will get a demo working. Uh, most likely it will be something interesting, um, uh, but I, I, um, I don't think it will be an own up VCPE use case, which has been originally requested by the folks, uh, because it is just complex and it's impossible to get in time. But uh, let's see how, how close we can get. Thanks. Great, thank you. And I will now add the links. So sorry, a uh, very quick question. This is Ramki here. So you mentioned uh, ONAP VCP use case. Um, so if you're not doing that, is that the thought? Is there a um, thought process to make it simpler? I like apologize for, example. For, for making the reference. I would like to remove it from this recording. Uh, we're gonna, we're hey, gonna this is Taylor. Like, Tank in chief. Um, on up use case is very complex. It involves a very long chain of, of, of devices, uh, including VCPE, including, sorry, there is some uh, shouting in the background. So, sorry. Um, There's some dark. Okay. Hey, this is uh, Taylor. Okay. I can speak to the CPU use case. What we're Actually, planning yeah, on doing I, is using I, okay. the uh, chain. Well, I, I, I don't think it's relevant to the, to the demo because we're not using the VCP use logic, case. Logic, Thank you. Let, let Taylor talk. Um, talk, um, there is one possibility. This is Ramki. So rather than CPU use case, we could go for something even simpler like the virtual firewall load balancer. Um, I mean, really much, much simpler our DNS. Uh, CP, I understand, is much more complex, but we can chat more offline also on that. Yeah, I'd like to. Uh, I'd like to hear Taylor's comment as well because he he may have some uh, useful in this scenario. Yeah, so, sorry, Taylor, I sure. I cut you off. I apologize. Please go ahead. We started by rebuilding the ONAP use case, and we've stripped out. We had a fork that's on the CNCF um, org. And there's a repo called onap-demo. It's a fork, and we did a lot of work on trying to make it re repeatable by others and decided to start over. And that's what the CNCF CNS repo is with all the comparisons that Mikkel and everyone is working on. We're not going to have onap um, for the Seattle demo. We will contribute 
the network functions, the CNS, as well as the VNF updates back upstream. I don't know if we'll ever actually use their demo specifically. We'll probably help them. But for what we're going to do is recreate some type of chained network function use case. It may be based on the CPU use case from ONAP. Uh, we have most of those components. We've actually rebuilt all of them as containers, except for VGMUX. That's the only one we're lacking. But if, if we come up with a, a different use case or the actual test scenarios that we run through, that's fine. It's mainly chained CNS and VNS that we can compare on Kubernetes and OpenSAC. Just one thought, additional thought is that uh, here is where, rather than CPE, if you look at uh, DNS um, or virtual firewall or virtual load balancer, it's probably much simpler. Uh, I, I know CPE is pretty complex. So, that, that, that's, 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 yeah, we, although I would say that the, we the, have courts. No, sorry. Oh, you can finish, Ed. Go ahead. Yeah, what I was saying is, uh, you know, that, that's a good suggestion, Ronki. Although the, the problem with uh, the DNS is, you know, DNS looks like every other app, so it's not really, it's not really part of the kinds of things you have to make a condition for uh, cloud native NFV for, because it doesn't really deal with packets. DNS as a protocol is sort of an application on top of networking in that perspective. Not no, no, I, that's why I said uh, there are a DNS, uh, virtual firewall, and virtual load balancer. So I was thinking actually more of the V firewall and V load balancer. DNS, so, but it's sort of the same workflow in inside ONAP. Uh, yeah, we can I mean, add virtual firewall also. Yeah. yeah I, I think that's actually probably uh, something good to think about. Um, I, I think mostly once we can get to the point where we can measure a chain of CNFs, which I think is where Taylor is going, then you know moderating what is in that chain is is quite doable they'll probably right uh, so I, I think they're probably on the right track in general um i do want to make sure Ramki, though, that we have enough time here at the end for your other topic sure <laughs> yeah I agree. Ramki, I know, totally uh, please Ramki, add uh, Ramki, we can just add a uh, virtual firewall also i can or, or yeah virtual firewall uh small thing vdn v firewall yeah vfw Perfect. yeah Ramki, if you'll follow up with us after, I'm happy to talk about some of them that we've done. We actually started with VDNS and we went through that and we started building out the different workflows and we decided to go with what Ed was just speaking about. Make sure that we can chain the different network functions and focus on those as building blocks. Then we can create the different workflows. So right now we have several different comparisons as we as we've built up. We're also doing this baseline performance test, which Machek was talking about earlier, to make sure that the very lowest level, the simplest case, we can validate the hardware. We are going to continue to add workflows. And we did look at something like the VFW and stuff like that that's more user focused. And then we also want workflows or test cases that are very specific on the network performance. So we're trying to get, make, it, make it capable to show all of this. Makes sense. Yep. Cool. Cool. So we don't have that much time left. So the uh, question is, do we have enough time to cover the Kubernetes policy? Um, so maybe we can kick off the discussion and perhaps have it as a, a key agenda item for next week. How about that? Yeah, I think that should be, that should be okay. Yeah. So, okay, so what I wanted to sort of understand was essentially Kubernetes as a network policy resource, which all of <laughs> Okay, so my, so my understanding in terms of Kubernetes uh, network policy is, so the policy is designed to work specifically with the uh, network plugins that are part of Kubernetes that get ingested in through, uh, through CNI. So what's interesting is the network policies themselves are not CNI specific. They're actually something that the network plugin would have to ingest in and apply. Uh, so one of the things about the, 
uh, the policies in that scenario is that they describe what pods can be connected to in terms of of uh, like you have a packet that's, that's coming in, that's, that's coming out there there may be a, an egress policy that says wh which namespace and which pod labels uh, can can this uh, uh, current pod connect to or an incoming packet comes in where's the source of that packet um, and based upon the namespace and pod labels uh, or and and the loud ports and so on where where what packets are allowed to be uh, sent to to the to be received by the pod as well. So you have both sides, an ingress and an egress policy. Those don't really make as much sense when you start looking at it from how network service mesh is doing, because what we're doing is a is a dedicated cross connect from from uh, one consumer to to an endpoint. And so so the standard network policy itself is not really uh, it's not really applicable in, in that way. And it, it, this makes even more sense when you start looking at things like shared memory. Like if you put a shared memory, uh, like a, a MIF between two containers that exist on the same node, there's nothing in between them. And so it becomes impossible in that scenario to even enforce any any policy as well. Uh, however, where we can enforce a policy and we haven't uh, thought much about this is uh, on the initial connections in the first place. Like we may have a policy. It, it, we haven't thought much about this particular path, but we could. But we can think about where. How, how do we ensure that this this particular uh, endpoint should even be reachable by by something that's requesting it? And like, how do we how do we handle admission control in in that particular scenario? And one answer could be from the CNF side, where the CNF itself can also can handle some admission control. But simultaneously, even reaching the endpoint in the first place uh, it could could be something that network service mesh can uh, can help facilitate. And so, so in that sense, the the standard Kubernetes network policy doesn't really make sense for us. But there is a network policy story that we likely need to that we likely need to address. And I think that this is a this is a good uh, kickoff for for what such a thing would look like. Does uh, I, I, does that make sense? Um, so uh, one thought here, so if you really look at Kubernetes network policy, it's sort of really a security policy, right? So admission control, um, you know, whether that prefix should be part of, um, essentially whether that prefix should be processed or not, simple admission control, security. Uh, I am with you on that. It is different from service mesh, but I'm also thinking of it slightly differently if, let's say the network policy were to have a next hop, right? So basically, rather than just an ad simple admission control, go back and say, hey, here is a bunch of prefixes and here's my next hop, then it sort of gets into the network service mesh paradigm, right? How you connect up these uh, network functions. Isn't that true? Yeah, and that's um, that's something that we're looking to address, I believe, through through wirings. And Ed, correct me if I if if I'm mis uh, misinterpreting this, uh, but um, yeah, with the with the network wirings that we're setting up in terms of how how they get chained and what the next hop should be, uh, there is some control that can be that can be handled uh, in that scenario. But uh, perhaps what you're thinking of is a more advanced use case where you might have a, a an endpoint that consumes a that consumes some form of uh, payload, and then and then they can select what is the next one. Maybe some of them bypass a firewall. Maybe and another one has to go through the firewall. So, and so you make a you make a a distinction based upon um, some information, which could be a header or some other mechanism, to determine which uh, which one of these two paths can be can be taken. So I, I think is, is is that closer to to what you're thinking? Um, correct. So uh, other is also whether, so right now in our network service mesh, we do have sort of a, I mean, how we build the chain, right? Correct. So basically we say, hey, uh, here is the uh, one service and then how do I connect to the next service? For example, firewall to DPI, right? So how you build the chain. So I'm just wondering whether this construct can be leveraged for it. I mean, basically um, the network policy itself, but sort of saying, hey, here are the objects and here is my next hop, right? So basically my next hop in the service. There are a couple things here. Um, so effectively, when I think about network policy and Kubernetes, what network policy is, is 
is selecting a set of pods who are to be isolated and it is providing conditions under which things are permitted to reach them. Because the standard, the standard contract in Kubernetes is every pod can reach every other pod at layer three um, unless there's a network policy that tells you to isolate the pod. Um, and, and so that's, that's basically what it is. Network policies in Kubernetes are policies about isolation of pods. That said, they do a very clever thing, right? And the clever thing they do is they, they select which pods are isolated using uh, selectors on labels on the pod, which is very, very clever. And then they use the similar selector mechanism to tell you who is allowed to reach isolated pods, which I think is also very clever. Um, I would expect, and so that those are very smart things. When you bump up to something like Istio and sort of classic service mesh, they do similar-ish kinds of things in terms of selecting which pods to direct TCP connections to or direct HTTP message, uh, requests, response messages to um, in classic service mesh. So, and they do that in virtual hosts right now. Where I'm currently thinking is that network service wiring sort of evolves to fill some of that role in terms of the higher level policy and streaming. But the, the, the problem still remains that you need to have some way of expressing that some network service endpoint is to be isolated and then expressing who is allowed to connect to that network service endpoint. And I would maintain that whatever mechanism we use for that should use sort of the selector on labels kind of approach. Um, I, the current thinking has been selectors on labels around the advertisement of that network service and the connection request for that network service. But you know, does that start to make sense to you, Ramki, in terms of the, what the thinking is and how that meshes with the thinking? Yeah, I, definitely. But I think, yes, but perhaps we can go through some more examples next time. Right? Yeah, yeah. And the other thing I would suggest is you, you jump on the IRC channel, there are conversations around this stuff all the time. So for example, we, we've got someone from Orange who pops into the channel most mornings. Um, and, and there's a bunch of conversations that have happened about trying to steer network service wirings uh, closer to virtual hosts. And, and you, they were originally thought about in terms of route rules. And, and so lots of really interesting things happen in the IRC channel on these conversations. So if you want to pop in there and start a conversation about this there, I think that probably would also be very productive. Perfect. Yeah, just so you know, that those conversations eventually get bubbled up here, even if the originator can't make it. So we want to drive architecture and so on through these meetings. So don't feel like you're cutting the rest of the community off if you decide to have a conversation there. It'll come back here. Uh, and with that, I need to cut off the meeting because we're, uh, we're a few minutes over. So thank you. Uh, th thank you, everyone, for, for attending. And we will see you next week. Thank, Thank you. you all. Thank you. Bye. Take care. Take care. Thanks. Thanks very much. Thanks.